So let us take uh, some geographic information system GIS and related question and answers and these are descriptive ones. First is define GIS, we will be, de we'll be visiting this GIS again and again. So what is GIS? GIS uh, is any computerized information system that is designed to store, manipulate, retrieve, analyze and display spatially referenced data. Now you know all these things are necessary, storing, manipulating, retrieving, analyzing and displaying. So these are all part of GIS. And information system means, you know, uh, it should provide you information and computerized means it should be uh, following certain computer science activities like database, database retrieval and all those um, data structure things that are there in computer science. And then displaying the spatially referenced data. This is very important because GIS deals with spatially referenced data. Spatially means those showing the location, size. These are the spatially. Uh, sp this is not special, but it is spatial. It depends, it, it, uh, this uh, word has come from space. So space, with respect to space uh, reference data, this GIS deals with it. What is the difference between uh, automated cartography, CAD and GIS? You know, many people understand and think that cartography uh, plus one is GIS. They say, okay, GIS is what, again, you are doing cartography only. CAD is computer aided design. You are, you are using computer for designing or making layers and making maps. So ultimately, what is the difference between these three? See, GIS, it adds the analytical capabilities, like you have graphic, means you can view and with attributes, various attributes. While this cartography and CAD, they lack, they lack all these, they, they don't have any analytical capabilities. Means in a, in a cartography or automated cartography and CAD, you cannot tell that, okay, at this point from this distance, uh, say 200 meter, how many ATMs are there or some accident has uh, taken place has happened then uh, within 100 meter of uh, distance what are the medical facilities which are available these analysis and you know flow hydrological flow and network you have to create a network of roads all these cannot be done in your cartography and CAD that only GIS provides you next is what is the difference between GIS and LIS GIS is geographic information system and there is one more uh, this information system which is a land information system so people often confuse that GIS is uh, LIS is nothing but a GIS only but land information system is a typical to GIS, which means LIS is specialized GIS, you can say, but related primarily to the large scale and parcel based systems such as automatic mapping and facilities management. So AM and FM means automated mapping and facilities management that you uh, find in uh, LIS. So land information system, GIS is, a, is very vast. GIS is a huge subject. It provides huge facilities right from the, from the inception, that is the, you know, uh, grabbing up of data till the time storing and displaying analysis uh, now we have web based systems also so this LIS is uh, only related to the large scale and parcel based systems such as you have automated mapping and facilities management though facilities management and automated mapping are part of GIS also but LIS specifically deal with this AM and FM list four of the advantages of GIS see there are various advantages of GIS it is not possible uh, right now to just in few lines explain but still we'll try First is your time minimization, accuracy improvement, data can be managed efficiently, you, are, you have already automated your system and the high cost to benefit ratio. You are sitting on a system, now you want, uh, you know, entire city to be, to be network with the uh, say 5, 4G or 5G uh, network or towers you want to, to uh, you know, lay. Now you want to place these towers and there is an undiluted terrain. Now, GIS will re reasonably help you to do that because the cost of going to each location and finding out the feasibility and uh, you know, possibility, it will be greatly or immensely reduced with respect to the system which is available to you in terms of or by the name of GIS. This is the main components of GIS. You know, somebody has said and it is very rightly being interpreted that GIS is software plus hardware, plus humanware, humanware, software, hardware, humanware. So you also have one more part that is dataware. So software, hardware along with those people who are doing or working along with this and with such certain data which is we call as specially reference data or spatial data. So main components of GIS are people, data, hardware, software and methods of course. Now if you say that methods are included in software, well and good, otherwise you can just replace the uh, or you can just extract out the methods also from software in a different, a different uh, uh, you know, numbering because methods uh, which are there to solve certain issues can be like in quantum GIS what happened you have plugins 
if if i am interested in some or the other uh, activity or the functionality i just use plugin in uh, rjs also you will find all this so you can just add a functionality so these methods are being used employed by a certain certain set of people those are not employed by other set of people next is discuss briefly the data information as one of the component of gis not data information data where we have seen so there are two basic types of map information in a gis first is your spatial and then a spatial what is spatial data spatial data is the map data is the location data the size data the, the um, relationship between the spatial data now the a spatial means you have a descriptive data means you have a say um, spatial data means you want you this is a point okay this is a point say uh, we say that uh, this is a building now this is a building okay this is a location now this building is say state empire building or you say this is a india gate or you say this is a, a leaning tower of pisa so all these are descriptive or description of this uh, building or this architecture or this monument then comes the um, spatial refers what spatial means spatial refers to the geographic features that are represented as raster or pixel or vectors so anything which can be represented in the form of raster and pixels they are known as spatial data like points lines and polygons all these are vectors and pixels are the raster so pixel and uh, vectors like point and polygon they together combine to form a spatial data a spatial or you know we said that gis has two data spatial and a spatial descriptive spatial we have defined now let us come to the a spatial data or a description data this refers to the say tabular data which records characteristics of geography features this this may not be in tabular data or you can easily store it in a file or in, a, in any excel sheet or csv dot csv file so you can just extract it and link it with this uh, spatial data and you can inform that this spatial data is referring to or is described by these various attributes now the next question is uh, discuss briefly people as one component of gis as we said that uh, anything which is there in this world is by the people and for the people you know only machines and aliens uh, could be the only um, component that where the people are not involved but in gis the major part or major role is played by people so people are uh, essential part of gis there are issues related to people which are uh, say training education management law security data sharing and coordination along with this your know, people are, is also included in the gis budget which includes the cost of data hardware software maintenance for for these people are always involved discuss briefly hardware as one component of gis see gis is a software no it is not a software quantum gis is not a gis only our gis is not a gis only your saga or you dig they are not gis until unless you have hardware with them they they will not be able to run how you are going to run uh, say quantum gis when there is no hardware you have to run it on some computer or machine so hardware is one of the important component of gis for that you need input like keyboard mouse slide pen or pen digitizer scanner and so you also need some processing strong processing unit cpu you need some good storage you know this is just an example you need a display a good display like screen or a city projector printer plotter sound system to actually add to your gis uh, you know all those aspects and facilities discuss briefly software as one component of a gis 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 is a software because gis consists of geographical information system now what is that information and what is the system the system is combination of all and the software is what is automating all this for this you need operating system graphic software database software statistical packages word processing image processing uh, gis systems like uh, these which i discussed also some presentation so all these are very much important and they are related somewhere or the other in in with respect to the gis this five gis websites that you have visited so you can name any of this i'm just giving you an example gis links gis.com geography network.com isri.com and tandup.co.uk amazon.com discuss briefly the impact of internet on gis internet on gis now uh, the latest buzzword and latest developments are on web gis that is web gis so exchanging and sharing of ideas via certain electronic mail email and online lists this these are the impact of internet on gis we have various online forum where you can discuss various problems can be resolved you have data transfer using some ftp file transfer protocol and this you can easily transfer data from one machine to another then browsing these websites various websites where locations various urls are available for you to browse the content of gis the application of gis even the gis itself so list five areas of gis application 
and I suggested earlier also GIS finds its application almost everywhere now. So uh, let us see uh, for, for foresters like timber inventory, for fire police ambulance, 911 emergency vehicle routing, GIS is involved, military for logistics and battle plans, GIS is involved, Tele telecommunications like citing cellular transmission towers, uh, local to national scale, government city planning, zoning, natural resources planning, academia used by many other disciplines outside of geography, not only geography but computer science, civil engineering, every engineering is using now GIS. Discuss briefly the GIS functions. What are the GIS functions? First of all, it starts all with the data acquisition. The data may be spatial, it may be non-spatial. Then the data has been acquired maybe raw or in certain format. Now you need to process them to make it suitable for GIS. You do some data management in this case. Then well, now the data is available to you, you do certain analysis, data analysis, like spatial analysis, statistical analysis. Then you do this storage because you know now you have data, you have to store it, you know, in the some um, uh, some storage where you can pick it up again like for analysis and other purpose. So data storage, you store data more efficiently because storing, accessing and traversing should be very efficient. Then the data output, that is the maps, the graphs, the tables, the reports and all those which are related to this, these are the data outputs of the GIS. Now compare between raster and vector model for representing geographic features. Raster and uh, vector model, these are the data structures for your GIS. And these two data along, they combine to, to uh, what we call as the spatial data. So vector data, the advantages of vector data is data can be represented at its original resolution and uh, form without even any generalization. The graphic output is usually more aesthetically pleasing because you know, it, it, um, it represents the traditional cartographic representation. And uh, since most data, for example, hard copy maps is in a vector form, no data conversion may be required. Accurate geographic location of data is maintained in vectors. And because uh, vector, it recognizes the entities, model allows for efficient encoding of topology. And as a result, more efficient operation that require topological information can be, can be carried out, like proximity analysis, network analysis. But vector data has disadvantages also. What are these disadvantages? First is the location of each vertex need to be stored explicitly, point line polygon. For effective analysis, vector data must be converted into some certain topological structure. You know, you cannot do it directly. You have to provide some topological structure. This is often uh, very intensive as far as processing cost is concerned. And it is usually, it requires extensive data cleaning also. Then topology is static and any updating or editing of the vector data requires rebuilding of the topology. Algorithms for manipulative and analysis functions, they are quite complex and again they are very intensity, in, uh, intensive with respect to processing. This inherently, this uh, limits the functionality of the large data set, for example, large number of features, you know, it will be more expensive. Continuous net data such as your elevation is not effectively represented in vector form. Uh, though we have this chain and etc. So usually substantial data generalization or interpolation is always required for these type of data layers. What are the raster data advantages? First is due to the nature of the data storage technique. Data analysis is usually easy to program and quick to perform. The inherent nature of the raster map, that is one attribute maps, is ideally suited for mathematical modeling and quantitative analysis. Discrete data is there. For example, forestry stands is accommodated equally well as continuous data. For example, uh, elevation data, facilities that, that, that you can integrate for these two data types. Grid cell systems are very compatible in raster based output devices, for example, electrostatic plotters or graphical terminals. So you can easily represent this in the displays also. They are also compatible with the digital satellite imagery, which is all, uh, already in the raster sequence. But there are disadvantages also of raster data. What are these disadvantages? First is the cell size determines the resolution at which the data is represented. So processing of associated attribute data will be very tedious and cumbersome if large amounts of data is existing. Raster maps normally reflect only one attribute or characteristic of an area like elevation or intensity value. Since most input data is in the vector form, data must undergo vector to raster conversion and vice versa. And most output maps from grid cell systems do not conform to the high quality cartographic needs. So do you know which software does DC GIS use? DC, the district GIS software standards consist of the uh, Environmental Systems Research Institute, ISRI products, and Google Incorporation, Google Geospatial Services and Software. The ISRI standard includes the RVIS line of desktops 
and server software product lines. The Google standard includes the Google Earth Enterprise line of server side side products and Google Maps for mashup type applications. There are other geospatial uh, software packages and vendors that can be commanded if uh, necessary to meet the specific business requirement. What is geographic information system? We have revisited it again. What is GIS? Uh, GIS is a system of computer, hardware, software, data and procedures and personnel combined to help manipulate, analyze and present information that is tied to a geographic location. What is GIS data mining then? GIS or spatial data mining is the application of data mining methods to the spatial data which is applied on the spatial data. So data mining which is a partially automated search for hidden patterns in large databases. It offers great potential benefit for the applied GIS based decision making. The typical applications including uh, it includes the environmental mon monitoring. A characteristic of such application is that the special correlation between the data measurement requires the use of specialized algorithm for more efficient data analysis. What is spatial ETN? Spatial ETN. Spatial ETN tools they provide the data processing functionality of traditional extract, transform, and load. Extract, transform, and load software. But with a primary focus in the ability to manage the spatial data. So they provide GIS users with the ability to translate data between different standards and proprietary formats while geometrically transforming the data in between. What is geostatistics? What is geostatistics? See, geostatistics is a branch of statistics only that deals with the field data, spatial data with some continuous index. So it provides methods to model spatial correlation and predict values at arbitrary location, that is the interpolation. What is hydrological modeling? Hydrological modeling. Hydrological modeling, the GIS hydrological model can provide a spatial element that other hydrological models they lack with the analysis of variables such as slope, aspect, and watershed or catchment area. What is GIS technologies? Modern GIS technology, they use certain digital information for which various digitized uh, data correction creations method are used. So the most uh, common methods for our data creation is digitization where a hard copy map or a survey plan is transferred into digital medium through the use of CAD program and georeferencing capabilities. Next is again what is GIS? Now we are discussing GIS again and again because this is the first question if you are a GIS person. So GIS is a computer system designed to capture, store, manipulate, analyze and manage and present all type of spatial or geospatial data. This acronym GIS is sometimes used for geographical information science also and ge ge geospatial information studies also to refer to the academic discipline or career of working with GIS uh, and is a large domain within the um, broader academic discipline of geoinformatics. So what uh, goes beyond a GIS is a spatial data infrastructure, a concept that has no such restrictive boundaries at all. So these are a few questions on uh, GIS, descriptive questions. Hope you are benefited by it. Thank you so much. Take care.